What is a mild traumatic brain injury? But there's a lot of def, you know, definitions for mild traumatic brain injury. Well, doctors early on were taught that it, you didn't have that long period of unconsciousness that you didn't have a brain injury. And if that, you had a concussion, concussion means automatically that you're going to get back to your pre-accident level of functioning. No, no ifs, ands, and buts. That's what concussion means. Doctors are taught that you know, concussions will cure themselves in about six months. Which, and, and they will tell people, you know, don't worry about it, this is, this is going to go away, you know, you just go home and, you know, and, and try to rest and take it easy, and you'll be perfectly fine in six months. Well, there are really, really mild concussions that do clear up. You know, they'll, they're clear, they'll clear up in, you know, three or four weeks, or sometimes it'll take as long as six months. But a lot of times, if you have a concussion that lasts six months, you're in trouble. Because essentially what you've got is you've got a brain injury that's lasted six months. That's a long time to be injured. If you had a heart condition for six months, or if you had a broken bone for six months that went untreated, your life wouldn't look the same. And that's what happens to, you know, the, the people that, that wait the, the, you know, the proposed six months to get better. At that point, when they don't get better, they get real confused and more depressed and anxious because the doctor told them that they were going to get, you know, back to normal. They're not even they're not even anywhere near normal. In fact, they're worse. Research shows that that um, uh, the the first gains that you get after a head injury with treatment is your window of opportunity for for treatment is about a year. Now that varies from person to person, how young they are, how healthy, what are the problems they've got. You know, the, the, the you know, there's an, um, the saying that under 40 people do better, over 40 that they don't do better. They, you know, they heal slower. But, you know, at, at if you wait six months to treat some of these people, you've already, you know, you've already lost half your window of opportunity for treating them. And so, you know, you need to, if you go to find, if you go to talk to a doctor, you're really going to need to have to ask them what, their, what their, is their definition of a mild traumatic brain injury. Keep in mind that with a whiplash type of injury, you don't lose consciousness at all. And it can be just as devastating as a head injury. Because a whiplash injury not only injures the brain, it also injures the brain stem which comes up through the from your from from in the back of your neck all the way up into the base of your brain which can cause symptoms exactly like a tradition, traditional brain brain injury because the brain stem actually is part of the brain i think it's getting better overall i, th I think medical doctors are beginning to um you know, accept the fact that that more people are having head head injuries than they than they used to think. The other problem that I mentioned, money is 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 probably one of the biggest problems. Tr treating a head injured person is expensive. If you're in a car accident, and let's say that right away you're diagnosed with a mild traumatic brain injury, or let's say you wait for six months. You know, you're treating them, but in six months, you, you know, you, you, you test them, you give them a neuropsychological test to see how they're functioning cognitively, and if they're not doing well, then we know that they've got a mild traumatic brain injury. Insurance companies don't want to pay for mild traumatic brain injuries. They would rather do anything than pay for mild traumatic brain injuries. In fact, they will go so far as to hire an expert of their own choosing to do, a, to do an identical neuropsychological test on you, but say that you're okay. Now, unfortunately, I've seen that over and over and over again. That cuts down their cost. Now, they pay these people who do these uh, IMEs, independent medical evaluations, a lot of money to say that there's nothing wrong with people. You have a standoff in court, and um, and 
and then hopefully what happens is that the person with the brain injury then gets a settlement. People don't understand that they can be, they can fight this court battle for three or four years. And while they're battling the court battle, they have no money for treatment. Uh, often during this period, they lose their jobs. It's not unusual for them to lose their homes. Um, it's not particularly unusual for them to lose their families. The divorce rate is very, very high. Um, and they don't have any money coming in, primarily because they're not functioning well enough to hold down a job. So it's vitally important when you, when you begin this search, when you're initially hurt, don't assume that you're going to get better. These are serious injuries. We've been taught in our culture that concussions are, they're no big deal. Don't worry about them. You know, you, you know anybody that's played football knows that you get a concussion or two. Yes, they do. And those kinds of blows to the head are different than, say, a car accident. There are different forces exer exerted on the, um, on the brain. And so you can have a mild concussion in, in, a, in a football game. They can, they can drag you out and send you back in, um, you know, without any really noticeable effects. However, it, it, it's been well known lately that in the pros, if a pro quarterback gets more than four or five concussions, they start asking him to resign. Now, a, a pro quarterback who's played his whole life and makes millions of dollars is not going to walk away from a game that he loves just because he's had a few concussions. He can't do it anymore. His memory is not good enough to do it. His sequencing is not good enough. You know, he, he, you know, he makes wrong, poor judgments. He can no longer play the game because he's had too many concussions and, and mild traumatic brain injuries, and, and they add up. They're, they're cumulative. They're like, they're like a boxer, like Muhammad Ali. The reason Muhammad Ali is, you know, the, the way he is is that he's taken too many punches, and all that is added up to you, you know, a, a, a condition where he's not functioning cognitively as well as he should, and it's affecting his motor, motor coordination as well as motor function. Colorado is very proud of its military and veteran communities. We're seeing about 20% of the military personnel returning from Iraq and Afghanistan with some type of a traumatic brain injury. Has the war in Iraq changed the attitude towards traumatic brain injury? Well. Yeah, and I'm encouraged by that. Uh, I think 20% is too low. Um, I think there's going to be a much higher number of men and women coming back uh, with mild traumatic brain injuries um, that go untreated. The um, military has a great way of, of, of um, saying on paper things that they want to do, which never get carried out. Um, I, I know a friend of mine who has just returned from Iraq who uh, was, was doing neuropsychological evaluations on troops. If he made a re recommendation that the person had a traumatic brain injury and couldn't go back to the field, the company commander could override that and send the man back to the field. They're, they're putting these people uh, through debriefings and they're putting them in, into some programs but they, they don't really have any, anything set up in mass in, in order to uh, treat that many traumatic brain injuries coming from Iraq. By all estimates, there's probably 50 or 60,000 head injuries that are going to show up eventually in our system.